So I've got a super huge conundrum here on the channel. Really super nice Saturn view, all wheel drive, 3.5 Honda. Very affectionately referred to as Honda Power Tupperware. This can also happen to the Pontiac Torrent, Chevy Equinox, GMC Terrain, Chevy Captivia, Captivia, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Theta platform. Just look up if your vehicle's Theta or it looks like this. It's got a really big problem here down below. Normally when I fix these things, they're not rusted all up through here. Usually they're only rusted from about here to about here. So this one's gonna present a little bit of a challenge for me. I got a solution. And I guess we're gonna see how this thing turns out. See if a Playboy can do it. Let's assess what this looks like. Wow. God, look at that. It's like it's never even been touched. It's crazy. So from right here back, we've got really good metal. I mean, that's just nuts. Then we look up here, it's like the front of this thing was underneath the sea or something. And then the rest of the car is just like this back here. It's crazy. Anyways, moving on. The object of my channel is to inspire and empower folks just like you. Keep food on your table, money in your pocket, and mechanics out of your corn purse by not only showing you how to fix things, but explaining to you why you're fixing them in the first place. Got really good support right here, but I think the best thing to do is cut this right here. It appears that on the inside of this is really, really solid. And the reason that that's the case is because this is like where three pieces of metal get pinch welded from the factory and this comes across right here. Most commonly when I take these apart, they're gonna end up looking like this once I cut the old box out. This is normally not rusted out. This is a really, really rare special occasion. But if we cut this from here, out to here and then make and fabricate a piece right here. We can probably leave this here for support and just add some quarter inch right here on the inside and the outside just to give it that dexterity right here and have us something to actually weld down to. And then we can fill this in. This doom that the engineers probably figure that this is more like a support thing. It's more about this pressure so this is more of a crash box and that's the reason that they have these ridges up inside here so this is able to collapse pressures pretty much work down here by what i you know what my little engineerish type mind thinks to this metal right here it's super solid you, you probably couldn't take a sledgehammer and move that because there's three pieces of metal right there now you've probably taken your vehicle to the shop and they told you they can't fix this the reason they can't fix this is because they don't have the time. They're worried about liability. They're also the ones that don't have to pull $6,000 out of their pocket to buy a used car that you know nothing about. So what's better, the devil you know or the devil you don't know? There's some ways around this kind of stuff. If you want to get somebody to fix it, you need to tell them, hey, you're not liable. Sell them your vehicle, get a price from them, buy your vehicle back because most states, whenever a vehicle is sold, they're sold as is. So like I'll buy these for scrap for 600 bucks and then I'll sell them back to the person when I'm done. Like in this situation, I bought this one for 600 bucks, sold it back to the guy for 2,600 bucks. No worries about liability. Whenever I'm doing this, I'm thinking to myself, if anyone else can do it, I have to be able to do it too. So that goes for you as well. I know that this looks extremely complicated, but I have made these brackets so they will be very simple for you. You do not need a lift. I will show you step-by-step step how to do this in the installation video. So right now, this is how we start. Add some filler right here. Make sure that this area where our cradle bracket's gonna sit is super strong. I think we'll be good and this will be a cool video. We'll see what happens when we're done. Okay, so I'm about midway through my Hacky Von Hackenstein process right here. Kind of look at it. This is all bad, uh, and I'm going to replace most of it, right? But there's really no wrong way to do this. And the thinking throughout the process of this is that if I get most of the bad out of here and I'm replacing it with good stuff, it doesn't really matter how much I take off. The plan, I guess, would be to take some quarter-inch rod, run it down up through here and make this curve right here 
Might have been my plan, but this wasn't my plan when I started with this. So they definitely change. And then take some sheet steel and weld it down to here. Relief cut my steel right here where these crash points are. That metal will buckle if it's in an accident. This is gonna work is because if we look underneath here and we were to take this fender off of here, it'd almost be like a circle. When that's broken down there, that circle is broken. You could collapse that circle. But once the circle is created, that becomes a really strong, strong area that's able to withstand a lot of pressure up and down. Since our cradle brackets are the majority of the problem, once we do that, that allows that cradle bracket to push that energy up that sidewall. It's not so much going to move back and forth because it's bolted here, bolted here, and here, and here, which will give it lots of rigidity and able to withstand many years of abuse. I don't think you'll be able to jump it like the Dutes of Hazard or anything. But this should get you around the urban jungle. At this point, I really don't know exactly what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna create something that fixes all of that that's rusted away up to about here and put something together bend it with the proper angles, make it to where I can connect it, and blah, blah, blah. This is the beginning and the real beginning of a lot of serious work. Uh, I had no idea how long this was going to take. I had no idea that I was going to do this 17 different times. But yeah, that's what I did. This is not one of those instances where fiery wood would be a good thing. Uh-oh. Smells like it. Certain, it smells good. Oh, zap! Didn't get me. <laughs> Just thought it was gonna, but it would have already got me if it was. <laughs> I was fairly certain that I would be able to bend this 11 gauge steel with this torch. I'm really starting to question the way that I'm doing this. Would have been better off keeping this longer so I could do that. Mark it again around with this piece for two or three more minutes of agony not knowing what the hell i'm gonna do that needs to roll upwards because this is the top doesn't matter might work it might i don't know so at this point i think i'm gonna relief cut this and make it easier to bend so i'm putting a little channel in it or chafing it whatever you want to call the damn thing i'm doing here and then hopefully I can make this arch that I need. Cutoff wheel, Milwaukee cutoff wheel would be perfect for this. Bam, bam. <laughs> then over to the vise, give it a little bend. That's kind of pretty close to the arch that I want, so. Well, let's take a look and see how it's fitting inside there. Need a little bit more. Just about there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Kind of straight. Doesn't matter, we're making it up as we go along. Kind of the objective is for this to fit inside there. Actually, idiot, that's the only objective is to make that fit up in there. It's still too long. This rib that I got cut out right here is about right there. So, to cut this off a little bit more. Try to make it. Oh, a big waste of time. So it's kind of starting to look a little bit like Christmas. Kind of. I don't know. People really undervalue the length of time it takes to do these things. This is really super complicated. I'm probably making it harder than it should but be. But I try to think of these things from an engineering standpoint. I want safety, usability, and reinforcement all in one. Ultimately, I had to scrap that idea because the metal that I was using was just way too thick and too difficult to actually work with. So, we're gonna show you the right way to do it if you were doing something like this at home. So anytime you need to recreate some kind of metal, especially sloped metal like this, you know, it's always best, and at least it seems to be anyways. You just take you some construction paper, and you, you know, you kind of make out what you're looking for. So in this situation, I know this isn't going to tuck all the way underneath here, 
I'm going to use this as my binding property right here for the most part because even if I get my grinder up in there and I wire reel this, this structure seems pretty solid, but you know, we want to make sure that it goes from solid to solid. So we need to build something that goes up in through here. And I'm going to show you a little trick that I use to actually recreate and, and affix this to this deteriorated metal, for lack of a better term. I don't want to say, you know, junk metal, but uh, yeah, that's kind of what it is. If you're ever like working on some of this, can you can take your fingers and you can feel that like this edge right up in here is real thin. You can feel that it gets thicker up through here. So technically speaking, most of this is just junk. We can leave it there because it doesn't hurt anything. We can cut it off later, whatever. This is not rocket science, people. We're just trying to extend the life of this automobile. We're not making it last forever. We're gonna do as good a job as we can, but within amount of reason. Could, you know, just cut this off and replace this whole part, but the problem is integrity of this metal would be compromised in this area or wherever we cut it. Plus we'd have to remove all of this and everything. That would not be uh, all any fun. Yeah, not any fun at all. We got enough good metal down here in these areas to be able to work. We just gotta clean it up and get it to really back to the thicker type metal, which is probably somewhere between 18 and 20 gauge. Now all I basically do is I've cut this off of my uh, support structure. So now I put my finger back there and I say, okay, well, my gap is right here. I can cut this lip off right here. And once I get this somewhat formed to the side that I need it, I can lay it all flat and cut off the piece of metal. Then I'll be able to bend these angles on here so I can connect it right here. Now the hopes is that I've cut that edge off of there, that I can take this, stick this up in here, or possibly, I guess in this situation, stick it up in here first. And then stick it back in here. Now, obviously our steel is not gonna work the same way, so we're gonna have some stuff to figure out at that time, but uh, yeah. So you can kind of see once I have two hands and I can get this all up in here. I've pretty much recreated this portion right here and I just need to slot these little humps right here cut this out so what I can do is I can take my fingers and I can press it all up in there and that'll give me an idea of where I need to cut without even necessarily marking it pulled this out of here you can kind of see where I made these indentions and I wore my fingers across there and even right here because there's two little bumps right here which are for crash points I'm probably just gonna cut it out right here and this is gonna go around that and then I'll notch it out right here a lot closer to having a piece that we could actually use up inside there and recreate this bottom kind of neat now I've got that hacked out I'll try to test fit this again see what happens definitely works uh cut this a little bit wider than I needed so I'll keep that in mind that bring this back this far right here I don't know if I got it off because it's a little bit weird I'm sure when it comes out it'll be what it's going to be fits up in here pretty well so hopefully we can make a piece of metal that is similar to this one laid that out so now we'll take the plasma and cut this down I think the plasma cutter is probably going to be a little bit of overkill and I need to make these corners and it's not so easy to do plasma cutting corners and circles and stuff. So we're going to do it differently. A lot of people can do it, but I'm carpentry challenged clay. Luckily, this stuff don't have to be perfect. <clears throat> so I'm going to use what's called a nibbler. I don't know what you can use this on, but I don't think it's going to cut this 14 gauge. It might cut 22 gauge. So let's see what happens. I think the nibbler did just fine. Now we'll notch all this out and see how it fits. Well, I guess it's kind of like art class with clay. But yeah, we could have done a much better job than that, but uh, whatever. Okay, let's see if it fits up in here. Now, obviously, the reason that I used this 
20 gauge here is because it's bendable. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> a piece of the, not so not so good as the cardboard was. Well, that's okay. We'll figure it out. Two hands needed by clay. Okay, I think I got this. Yeah, kinda. Kinda going up in there now. Damn it. <laughs> I want this to work. I don't want to be messing with this all day. Okay, so I can feel up in here that this part that goes up this way is hitting up against this wall a little bit. So I'm gonna trim it off just a hair up in there. So it brings this edge out here. And I can feel right here my little bumpy things. They're still contacting that metal and I want them, I know it looks kind of flat here, but not, not as flat back here. So we want them to be flat. So I'm gonna notch these out just a little bit more, bring it up here just a little bit. Looks like they fit in there pretty well. And yeah, so it's starting to look like something. Mm, not too bad, not too bad at all. Once we get that uh, kind of fitting in there the way we want, then we'll mark this edge right here and we'll just put it in the vise and put a little 90 on it. Well, now we just quite simply just take that, pound the shit out of it, bend it over. Hopefully we went the right way. <laughs> Got a little gnarly edge right there, but we'll bend that over too. Yeah, it's starting to look like a banana hammock now. Kind of got a little twist to it. They like that though. Note to self in the future, more overhang was intended at the beginning of this, but we are looking good. Now we need to make a piece it goes up here. It's in this area right here. I'm wondering how the hell I'm going to pull all this down and weld it in. Well, I've got a solution for that already. I'm like Hannibal from the A-Team. I love it when a good plan comes together. Okay, so now we've got to clear up all of this scaly rust and get this cleaned up a little bit with the wire wheel. Obviously, before we put in our pieces inside here. Got that cleaned up a little bit. Well, I'm gonna take some weld through primer and an eighth inch drill bit. I'm gonna make some random holes. I really don't have any reason or whatever. I just make the holes that I feel like making people. I want the holes that I make to actually have steel behind them. So you're not just making them anywhere, but it doesn't really matter. Now, weld through primer, do not get it confused with self-etching primer. It is not the same thing. Be extremely generous with the weld through primer. As a matter of fact, just don't want it drip down on your tool, okay? Because that's bad. Primer on tools is bad, okay? Don't do primer on tools, kids. Also make sure that I get up inside there fairly well because we're not gonna be able to coat this when we're done and it's always nice to check back up inside there and make sure you got up in there really well too so i'll probably do two coats on the inside because this is the only coating the inside's going to get and if you've done a decent enough job getting most of the rust off of there the scaly rust you'll slow it down you'll never stop this rust it's not possible when i put my parts up inside there i'll use a self-tapping screw to draw that up so when i go and weld it into these big holes right here I'm able to get penetration so I can hold that and keep that outside layer right there. You'll see what I'm done. Okay, now we need to lock this thing down. I'm gonna use some number 10 one inch screws and I'm gonna pull this down so when I tack weld all of this, it's snug and tight up against everything. I just wanna make sure it's up against my wall right there. I'm gonna reinforce this down here like it was in the factory but we're gonna do it similar to the factory uh, with the exception of our cradle bracket, which are my inventions. Just pin down like you can see that edge curled up up there. 
I'm gonna have to use a pry bar and hold it down over there and then tack weld it up underneath here. But she's coming along pretty good. And before I seal this up, I'll put some tacks up along the edge right here and I'll cut off these screws. Not that they really need to be, it doesn't really matter either way. So now I've made me another piece and then obviously after installing it, I realized it needed to be some variating sizes. Let's check it out. Okay, note to self. These are bolt holes. These have bungs behind them, which makes this panel not flat, which makes these push away. So I had to screw up here, okay? Down here, Clay, make sure you uh, drill holes in this before you place them together, because you are not gonna be able to drill through that. That is thick as shit. For the most part, other than the way it looks at the moment, it's not going too bad. We don't want is we don't want a huge gap right here and we want to keep this tight because that's you know it's going to push pressure up on there and we don't it, it it shouldn't once everything's connected and our circle is connected here it, it should be pretty damn stable just in case just go to town weld it all down now it doesn't look ultra pretty at this point but it will when we're done we can fill up all of these little tiny burn through spots where we were adjusting our temperature on our welds seam sealer and then we're going to coat over all of this with truck bed liner so we're hopefully going to slow down the rust but we're going to make sure that we primer all of this and get everything covered up now i personally went and ground all of mine down and i'll take my caulking and go around all of these areas I needed to keep this and this, the mounting of front bumper cover. Any holes that I don't have, like there was an electrical component sitting right here, and I think I actually put a weld over the nut. We can just use self-tappers to reinstall that, probably in a more forward location, which won't hurt anything because it is what it is. And if you don't think this is very strong, I'm telling you, you are creating a circle and you're filling up that circle. Now, I like to do my motor mounts right and left at the same time. I like to set the cradle back down onto my motor mounts and do what I'm supposed to do to fill this in. So now I'm gonna start working on the other side, which is pretty close to this one. Then I'll show you my finished product when I'm done. The proprietary installation portion of my brackets. And it's how I make a living, keep food on my table and feed my family. But showing you guys and explaining to you folks out there how this is done and the thinking behind it is super cool, or at least it is to me anyways. Now on the passenger side, I'm pretty much working with the same scenario that I was working with on the driver's side. So I'm starting to clean everything up and inventing new parts. Now we've got this all cleaned up and we're ready to install our brackets. Show you the thinking behind this, especially if you don't have this big old cutout piece that I have. So my passenger side turns out a lot better than my driver's side because I made some new parts that I did not use on the driver's side. And I make this a lot simpler process. So when you're doing this stuff at home, it's super easy. You just put all these pieces up in there and you're We're going to go. start installing my pieces. Now, your pieces that you may get could possibly look a little bit different than these. I'm going to engineer these and probably refabricate them somehow, but for the most part, this is going to be pretty darn close to what you're going to get. Parts that I use are designed so if you do have a front end impact, it will crush inward. It's front part first, then lay over the top part. So you can squeeze over the top of there and it doesn't get, you know, bunched up. But that's the way I design them and that's why it has these openings and stuff. So they will crush inwards if there is an accident. Say any one piece may change it may be this brace bracket right here. This is gonna be the foundation that's missing from up underneath there. And I may design it to where it comes across here or something like that. I'm, I'm not quite certain, but I know this is gonna work for right now and it's gonna be good and sturdy. I've got everything cleaned up. I've got it all primered and painted. Just trying to add structural integrity to our circle here. It's pretty simple. You don't have to think a whole lot. I've made this really easy for you. You're going to be able to do it.
When I'm doing this, I do both sides at the same time. The piece of these is so large that it's not necessary for it to be in the exact position as the other one. So you really cannot mess this up. At least you shouldn't be able to. I'm sure somebody will figure out a way, but it's pretty simple. There, I put my finger back here and just make sure it's somewhat close, probably in the middle right there. This edge lines up with this edge right here on the back side. The only thing we're really gonna use a ruler for because we don't have to measure anything, set it up in there until it's flat. Then you can just tap it into place, weld it down, and go to town. If you didn't have to cut all this way, you can just use this right here. If you stick your finger up in there or you can see back there and you see it's a little bit off like this, we don't really want that. We want that to be flat with this ruler so we have a flat edge. You can move the ruler back and forth once you get that flattened out and that square. And then that'll tell you if it's down on one side or up on one side, blah, blah, blah weeks since I started this project and uh, we had the crime that Colin was involved in and been in the ICU so I had forgotten a couple things that I had designed but I had it designed before that happened and just never got to it so if you end up getting the J bar which is the design that I think I'm going to go with more than like that U that I was showing you before the shorter side goes on the inside because it would rub up against them crush rails now we're gonna take this piece right here, up in there, and if you can't get it up in there, you just turn it sideways. So now I'm gonna get that rough laid in. Right here, we're gonna pull it down, and you can screw this in here with the self-tapping screws. You're gonna kind of get the, get the logist of this as you're putting it together. Now this is the area where our bracket is gonna sit on there. So all we gotta do to slide this thing up in here is turn it sideways. These brackets are a little bit self-explanatory, but once again, we need to make sure this fits down as flush as possible. I don't think pop rivets are exactly what I want to use in this situation, so I'm going to use my stainless steel screws. A couple screws in there. It's kind of a pain in the ass to get these screws to start, but we need this pulled down so we can tack it into place. We're going to bend this lip over to meet up with here. I make these this way so I can make a left and a right. This over is pretty simple. You could probably take a hammer and do it, but what I do is I just gradually go down and bend it. And once I get it so close, I'll bend it right here and grab it with these pliers. The way it's designed, it's designed to work for everyone. And just because yours needed more trimming than others, doesn't mean other people didn't use the portions that you didn't use. So keep that in mind if you're criticizing having to trim some things up. Now we slide this up in here and we put it up in there to where it pretty much just fits up in there. And this is, this is what I'm talking about. People are gonna have different situations. Now we're gonna clamp this to this wall and up in there how we like it, we're good to go. And we'll tack this puppy down, yo. When you purchase your cradle brackets from me, you're going to see step by step, not only how to do this, but why you're doing it and the thinking along with the engineering that comes along with doing this. There's a lot of parts that I cut out of this particular video just so I could show you that this is possible to fix and it will last for a number of years to come. Stuff on everything, even down there, sealed up the seams, sealed up the holes in the back, everything. Now we can wait 60 minutes and that stuff will be dry. We'll go to the other side, do it. And then we should be able to paint it. And we are almost done after we put all the nuts and bolts back on the motor mounts. But for the most part, we are done. I would say this turned out pretty good. What do you think, eh? Here's a look at our driver's side. It turned out really, really good. And I'm very, very pleased. I hope you can see that by creating this circle and filling in the circle that your vehicle will stay on the road for numbers of years. Experimental front engine cradle Clayway brackets brought to you by Clayway Wacko. I hope you garnered from this video that you can keep your vehicle on the road and that most mechanics or most shops 
really don't care about your pocketbook the same way you and I care about your pocketbook. Obviously, I care about mine as well. I do this to help myself along with helping you. Hopefully, we can keep each other's families together and everyone's happy. Remember, no matter what it is you think you can or cannot do, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. If you have an automobile-related question, I happily answer them on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on Facebook Messenger for free, mind you. That's where you're going to go to order these brackets. And if you use the Clay Wacko code, I give you five bucks off each bracket. That's kind of like paying you for watching this video. I can't help you with baby mama drama, but I may be able to help you fix your whip. God bless, folks. Please consider subscribing, clicking the notifications, sharing my videos down below. Have a great day, yo. Definitely don't be the next to them, be the absolute first of you.